Hi, my name is Chiara Vestrini. I will be accompanying you through Model 6, Basic GIS Mapping for Citizens. This model will consist in five lectures dealing with the role of mapping history, an introduction to GIS and participative GIS, as well as some best practice on participative GIS developed in Europe, and finally, an overview on open and private GIS software. Lecture number one, from classical cartography to radical geography. This lecture will introduce the concept of map and its evolution through the history. We will analyze what is meant for classical mapping, critical mapping and radical geography. What is a map? Following the definition stated in ICA Strategic Plan 2003-2011, a map is a symbolized representation of geographical reality, representing selected features or characteristics, resulting from the creative effort of its author's execution of choices, and is designed for use when special relationships are primarily relevant. A map is a symbolic representation of selected characteristics of a place, usually drawn on a flat surface. Maps present information about the world in a simple visual way. They teach about the world by showing sizes and shapes of countries, location of feeders and distances between places. Maps can show distribution of things over the earth, such as settlement patterns. They can show the exact location of houses and streets in a city neighborhood. Some common features of maps include scale, symbols and grids. All maps are scale models of reality. A map scale indicates the relationship between the distances on the map and the actual distances on the earth. Cartographers use symbols to represent geographic features, for example, Black dots represent cities, circle star represents capital cities, and different sort of lines represent boundaries, roads, highways, and rivers. Colors are often used as symbols. Green is often used for forests, tan for deserts, and blue for waters. A map usually has a legend or key that gives us the scale of the map and explains what the various symbols represent. Many maps include a grid pattern or a series of crossing lines that create squares and rectangles. The grid helps people locate places on the map. On small-scale maps, the grid is often made up of latitude and longitude lines. Longitude and latitude lines are numbered. The intersection of latitude and longitude lines called coordinates identified the exact location of a place. Furthermore, a map is a cultural and social representation of what is around us, part of the cultural knowledge we acquire by the time being part of a society. Maps do obvious things. They tell us where a city is located, where in the world we are, and how to get from point A to point B. They exist to provide specific information. They are literal and straightforward. They help us giving a graphic understanding of the world around us. A traditional map is created by cartographers to reflect reality accurately as it is on the ground. In the process of map making projections, Cartographers must make choices regarding how they will modify a flat map to create a two-dimensional representation of a three-dimensional object, that is, Earth. Therefore, mapping inevitably entails distortions. 
John Brian Harley, geographer, cartographer and map historians, hold that maps belong to a cultural system. They are shaped not only by scientific rules of geometry, but also by norms and values spread by social traditions. In his famous publication, Mapping a Critical Introduction to Cartography and GIS, Jeremy W. Crampton defines mapping as a human activity that seeks to make sense of geographic world, a way in which we find our way in the world. In his view, the term mapping can be associated to different ways of knowing geographically. Both cartography and GIS, despite their differences, are part of the tradition that lies in human desire of understanding. Maps are a social, political and cultural product. Map maker decides, so choose, how and what to represent. A choice that implicitly suggests hierarchies and positions. Everything is off the map, is not or is disorder. As affirmed by Brian Harley, all maps are interpretations, so we must first know just why they were made. We have to know the historical and cultural context to better understand it. The role of cartographers changed through the history according to the use and purpose of maps. Initially, they were considered as the ones who created the maps. They only become famous for their contributions to the art and science of cartography after they have created a masterpiece. During Roman times, cartographers focused on practical uses, military and administrative needs. Their need to control the empire in financial, economic, political and military aspects made evident the need to have maps of administrative boundaries, physical features or road networks. Roman maps were more or less restricted to the area comprised by what they called Mare Nostrum, since this was the core of the Roman Empire and around which all the administrative regions were distributed. During the early Middle Age times, 5th to 10th century, Muslim scholars continued and advanced on the map-making traditions of earlier cultures, mostly following Ptolemy's methods. There were advances in a more accurate definition of the measures unit, plus great efforts in trying to describe and define the calculation of the circumference of the Earth. There were also numerous studies and methodologies to draw a system of meridians and parallels that helped greatly to the evolution of the science of cartography. In the 13th century, through the travels of the Italian explorer Marco Polo, Europeans learned about the riches of China. Curiosity was awakened. A desire to trade with wealthy Asian cultures motivated and renewed interest in exploring the world. Indeed, the period of time between the 15th and 17th centuries is known in the West as the age of exploration or the age of discovery. With the dawn of the age of discovery, the study of geography regained popularity in Europe. The invention of printing press in the mid-1400 helped spread geographic knowledge by making maps and charts widely available and improvements in shipbuilding and navigation which facilitated more exploring and improved the accuracy of maps and geographic information and contributed to rise of cartographers as influent people in the most powerful country of the world. The commercial expansion, the colonization of new parts of the world and the search for military superiority over other countries brought the need to have more accurate maps to control as much as the world as possible. Putting great emphasis on the cartography of the coastal areas and the new inland region discovered during these times. Until the 20th century, the cartographer is the one who creates map. 
The map was used to understand where homeland was located in relation to other places and to natural patterns. Throughout human history, most societies have tried to discover something about their place in the world and the people and environments around them. Ancient Greek geographers developed very detailed maps of areas in and around Greece, including parts of Europe, Africa and Asia. They also raised questions about how and why different human and natural species came into life on her surface and why variation existed from place to place. The effort to answer these questions about patterns and distribution led them to figure out that the world was round. To calculate Earth circumference and to develop explanation of everything from seasonal flooding of Nile River to differences in population densities from place to place. Lecture number one from classical cartography to radical geography. These concerns have been central to geography ever since, not only for Greeks, but also for Muslim world and Chinese empire. During the Middle Ages, great advances in geography were made by scientists of the Muslim world, based around the Arabian Peninsula and North Africa. Geographer of Islamic Golden Age applied their study of people and places to agriculture, determining which crops and livestock were most suited to specific habitats or environments. Here, as an example, the Alidris' world map. In addition to the advances in Middle East, the Chinese Empire in Asia also gave a wide contribution to geography. The Chinese were scientifically advanced, especially in the field of astronomy. In 1000, they also achieved one of the most important developments in history of geography. They were the first in using the compass for navigational purposes. China was the first country to develop a grid system to plot maps, and these were highly accurate compared to their contemporaries in Europe and the Islamic world. In Europe, during the Middle Ages, we can distinguish two trends. On one hand, the earliest form of Western mapping, the religious Mappamundi. Many Mappamundi were based on the T and O model. These two letters are the initials of the Latin words terre in orbis, meaning the whole world. T corresponds to the Mediterranean, the right to the Nile, the left to the Russian river Don. The whole is enclosed in the circle of the ocean, the O. The maps were oriented in the east and the earth is divided into three sections. The center is Jerusalem, in the upper half of the disk is represented Asia, in the bottom Europe and Africa. The purpose of these maps, rather than give information about the size and shapes of the world, was philosophical and didactic telling the Christian idea of the world. This theological orientation is evident, for example, in the world map of Ebsdorf. And, on the other hand, the geography used for practical purposes by merchants and sailors expressed in Portland charts. The origin of medieval nautical charts is still unknown but is certain that the spread of these maps is closely related to an event that revolutionized navigation, the introduction in Europe of the compass. These maps were very detailed on matters regarding helpful information to navigation, such as indication of spatial distribution, coastal profile and cliffs. A good example of these kinds of map is the Carta Pisana, which describes with accuracy the Mediterranean coastline.
The commercial expansion, the colonization of new parts of the world, and the search for military superiority over the countries brought the need to have more accurate maps to control as much as the words as possible. Putting great emphasis on the cartography for the coastal areas and the new inland region discovered during these times. In 15th century, cartography was invested by profound changes. In Florence was found and translated Ptolemy's geography. The rediscovery of Ptolemy's gave it to cartography a new scientific mathematical foundation showing the limits of the medieval representation. The work reintroduced the affirmation of the sphericity of the earth and fixed the scientific laws that remained long throughout the next cartographic production, such as the orientation of the maps with the north at the top, the grids based on meridians and parallels and the use of projections. From 1900 onwards, it is considered cartographers who studies and analyze maps without necessarily creating them. After the Industrial Revolution, trading and commerce increased enormously throughout the world. The post-industrial revolution also brought the rise of a middle class who started to be able to afford luxuries such as books and travels. Travel for pleasure became a big interest for the burgesses, while travel for business was a matter of a big importance for merchants and other members of the middle class. Geographers and cartographers had to respond to the increasing demand of that emergent class, and therefore another impulse was given to cartography and the map-making professionals. Later, during the 19th century, railroads expanded rapidly throughout the world, making travel faster, cheaper, and more accessible to more and more people. Cartographers put more of their energy and effort in producing up-to-date maps, showing the latest extension to the railroad network. During these times, maps normally eliminated the remaining decorative features and became almost entirely factual. 20th century, strategic use of maps. In colonial age, maps were first used in reconnaissance missions and provided military information. They were subsequently used to pacify, civilize and exploit newly conquered colonies. Maps therefore asserted the conquest of new territories and extolled the virtues of empire. All along the exploration age, European map gave one-sided image of ethnic conflicts and supported Europe's divine right to appropriate new territories. The development in Europe of power-conscious national states, with standing armies, professional officers and engineers, stimulated an outburst of topographic activity in the 18th century, reinforced to some extent by increasing civil needs for basic data. Many countries in Europe began to undertake the systematic topographic mapping of their territories. World War I, and to a much greater extent World War II, brought great progress in mapping. Vast areas of the unmapped part of the world were covered during the war years, and the resulting world aeronautical charts have provided generalized information for other purposes since that time. Topography has long been understood as an important aspect of infantry attacks and defense. Battles and wars could be won or lost, based on how a commander chose to position his units on the battlefield. During modern times, maps have been further strategically used for political and propaganda ends. Some examples of maps influencing national thoughts have been produced in fascist Italy, Nazi Germany and communist Russia. In fascist Italy, the geopolitical journal Geopolitica, produced between 1939 and 1942, is the most famous case of cartography 
and geography as propaganda. This journal received a lot of governmental support and therefore was largely influential in the revisionist approach to history seen throughout the fascist world of 20th century. We also see similar instances of maps influencing national thought in Nazi Germany and Communist Russia. Even the color of the nations in a world map can foster ideas about the country being alighted. For example, Britain and her Commonwealth were painted a sickly yellow by Nazi Germany, suggesting a country lumbering towards its death, whereas the Axis powers were a healthy red color. World War II would not be the first or the last time a propaganda war would include maps. Something that may otherwise seem innocuous can be highly influential when pitched in the right way to the right audience. Today, though, maps are more likely to show us erroneous information than be outright deceitful. For example, crime statistics need to be adjusted for population density to avoid showing misleading information. Module number 6 Lecture number one, part three. From 1900 onwards, it is considered cartographers who studies and analyze maps without necessarily creating them. After the Industrial Revolution, trading and commerce increased enormously throughout the world. The post-Industrial Revolution also brought the rise of a middle class who started to be able to afford luxuries such as books and travels. Travel for pleasure became a big interest for the burgesses, while travel for business was a matter of a big importance for merchants and other members of the middle class. Geographers and cartographers had to respond to the increasing demand of that emergent class, and therefore another impulse was given to cartography and the map-making professionals. Later, during the 19th century, Railroads expanded rapidly throughout the world, making travel faster, cheaper and more accessible to more and more people. Cartographers put more of their energy and effort in producing up-to-date maps, showing the latest exemption to the railroad network. During these times, maps normally eliminated the remaining decorative features and became almost entirely factual.
Lecture number one from Classical Cartography to Radical Geography. The transition from traditional cartography to GIS allowed a form of reappropriation of the power of mapping. The theories of critical cartography stress the connection between mapping and power by enabling the emergence of hidden interests. In this regards, the publication of Dennis Wood, The Power of Maps, 1992, was particularly significant. His message that those hidden interests could be made to work for others became a manifesto for many counter-mapping projects. In these terms, if we consider the map as a specific set of power knowledge claims, then not only the state but others could make competing and equally powerful claims. John Pickles one of the main theorists of critical cartography said, instead of focusing on how we can map the subject, we could focus on the ways in which mapping and the cartographic gaze have coded subjects and produced identities. This explains exactly what is at the center of interest of critical cartographers. Indeed, the scope of the critique is the analysis of maps aimed at identifying the attributes of the maps that are usually taken for granted. The importance of this theory in the context of the process of democratization of cartography is the connection that is suggested between maps and power and the role of citizens. Pickles rethinks mapping as the production of space, geography, place and territory, as well as the political identities people who inhabit and make these spaces have. Mapping is now in the hands of citizens. The revolution stands not only in the democratization process of access and production of maps, but also because we are able to map new things, intangibles like social phenomena, feelings, impacts and more. People are now creating maps for themselves, giving the citizens points of view to the map and telling to researchers as well as decision makers what is important to them. These new actors are widening and spur the things that can be analysed and mapped. Mapping is becoming part of the creation of a culture of a city. The same discipline of geography in its approach to social change widens and has to take into account 
the links to social studies. Geographers are now dealing with different disciplines. Professor Pickles, as an example, is an economic geographer trained in a political economy and development studies, cultural and social theory, and continental philosophy. In this context, we understand why Pickles convey an active role to maps. Indeed, Pickles say, Maps are active. They actively construct knowledge, they exercise power, and they can be powerful means of promoting social change. An additional perspective that influenced the evolution of the geographical academic debate is derived by the contribution provided by the so-called theories of radical geography. Radical geography criticized the mechanistic view of geographical sciences, giving more space to the applications of new technological tools used to analyze social, political and cultural dynamics. The radical geography, based on Marxist theoretical approach, focuses on spatial representation based on the study of social phenomena, as marginalization, poverty, living conditions, social conflicts. Following this analysis, the territorial organization reproduces the social organization, and it has to be read by distinguishing dominant and subaltern spaces, center-periphery theory. The radical approach in geography is relatively new. Radicalism grew as a major criticism of quantitative geography, positivism, and traditional regional geography. Module number 6. Lecture 1. Part 4. The origin of radical geography can be traced to the radical geography movement which started in 1960 in the USA. The intense social brew that developed in the USA in the 60s enhanced a more realistic and open society, willing to claim for social justice. In 1969 at Clark University, Ben Weissner edited the first publication of Antipode. Since then, Antipod will be known as the Journal of Radical Geography Community. This decade was also shaken by the Vietnam War, the civil rights movement of the blacks, and all the pervasive phenomenon of poverty in urban ghetto, which generated social tension. A new climate of liberal reform spread across the nation, reflected by the anti-war demonstrations, peace marches, women's liberation, and environmental movements. Their incisive introduction to an atlas of radical geography, Bagat and Mogul explain. We define radical geography as the practice of map making that subverts conventional notions in order to actively promote social change. The object of critique is not cartography per se, but rather social relations. William Bunge, the pioneer of radical geography, following the rising social changes, decided to dismiss abstract theoretical geography and begin a quest for social relevancy, political action, a new philosophical basis for the discipline. In 1968, William Bunge funded the Society for Human Exploration, one year later, he created the Detroit Geographical Expedition with the objective of deeply exploring a urban decade area of Detroit. The interesting aspect of the Detroit Geographical Expedition is not its aim, its methods or its medium, but the methodology of their field research. Punch and his co-workers aimed to advance knowledge by sending teams to uncharted territory to look measure and record what they encountered and disseminate their findings in maps, lectures, journals and books for the enlightenment of a curious public. 
It was in 1969 that radical geography gained visibility first at the Association of American Geographers meetings, where radical geographers for the first time defined themselves as a group, and secondly thanks to Antipod, a journal of radical geography, a project initiated in Clark University in 1969. Antipod was a student-led initiative, a re reaction against the Vietnam War, racism and pollution. The K of Antipod's origin is the term radical. Ben Weisner, its first editor, told, we were groping for root causes of the problems, contradictions and inconsistencies, and hypocrisies with which we had grown up. In 1969, Ben Weisner edited the first publication of Antipod, whose purpose, he declared in his introductory editor's note, was to ask value questions within geography, to question existing institutions concerning their rates and qualities of change, and to question the individual. In early 70s, radical geographers were political liberals who investigated relevant social problems and unexposed inequalities. Later, they became more and more pragmatic and radical. The transition from traditional cartography to GIS allowed a form of reappropriation of the power of mapping. The theories of critical cartography stress the connection between mapping and power by enabling the emergence of hidden interests. In these regards, the publication of Dennis Wood, The Power of Maps, 1992, was particularly significant. His message that those hidden interests could be made to work for others became a manifesto for many counter-mapping projects. In these terms, if we consider the map as a specific set of power knowledge claims, then not only the state, but others, could make competing and equally powerful claims.
Antipod continues to publish some of the best and most provocative radical geographical work available today. Works from both geographers and their fellow travelers, from scholars both eminent and emerging. Since August 1969, Antipod has published peer reviewed papers which offer a radical, Marxist, socialist, anarchist, anti-racist, feminist, queer, green analysis of geographical issues and whose intent is to engender the development of a new and better society. Now appearing five times a year and published by Willie Blackwell, Antipod continues to publish some of the best and most provocative radical geographical work available today. Perpetrating the values of radical analysis, Antipod welcome papers which are challenging, which exhibit a will to not only interpret but also transform the world. Antipod papers are rigorous and intellectually substantive. They wrestle with debates in geography and take them forward, but they also go well beyond geography, trepassing and disrupting disciplinary borders, as it was for the fathers of radical geography. 20th century, strategic use of maps. In colonial age, maps were first used in reconnaissance missions and provided military information. They were subsequently used to pacify, civilize and exploit newly conquered colonies. Maps, therefore, asserted the conquest of new territories and extolled the virtues of empire. The innovation of Bunge's research was the production of collaborative counter-maps. The collaboration between academics and city residents set the basis of a future wider use and production of maps. If cartography traditionally mapped outward toward new frontiers of unexplored terrain and colonial exploration, Bunge's approach was to move inward toward those pockets of place not undiscovered but overlooked or exploited. Here we show the example of the Bunge's map titled Where Commuters Run Over Black Children on the Pointis Downtown Track, thus renamed the protest map. The origin of radical geography can be traced to the radical geography 